brings me to today. And my hope with this work and with this book is to be able to talk to people about something that we don't like to talk about. And we were talking about that over here. Death is just not something that we talk about at the coffee shop, is it? It's something our culture is anti-aging. Everything is Botox and whitener and tone it up. And we don't talk about aging, let alone dying, because we just don't talk about it. And I think that we, as a culture, need to be able to look at that. And for sure, people in healthcare. Um, no matter what our belief system is, no matter what we work out of, I think we have to be comfortable with our own, do our own inner work around our mortality so that we can help people feel comfortable talking about it too. And we're often the ones that have to broach the subject, but often the ones that feel uncomfortable. So let me just start with a couple of Henry's reflections on this topic. Henry says that people are dying. Not just the few I know, but countless people everywhere, every day and every hour. Dying is the most general human event, something we all have to do. But do we do it well? Is death more than an unavoidable fate that we simply wish would not be? Or can it somehow become an act of fulfillment, perhaps more human than any other human act? Is death such an absolute end to all our thoughts and actions that we simply cannot face it? Or is it possible to befriend our dying gradually and live open to it, trusting that we have nothing to fear? Is it possible to prepare for our death with the same attentiveness that our parents had in preparing for our birth? Can we wait for our death as for a friend who wants to welcome us home? The actual term befriending death comes from Carl Jung's work where he talks about how we have to befriend our shadow. And um, Henry talks about this Richard Hillman who he taught at Yale. And they, they, Hillman was a union analyst and so they were talking about this in class and he said, you know, it's, it's about befriending. He said, isn't that true? Isn't that the thing that we really fear the most is dying? And that until we can befriend that, then we can't live outside of that here. He says this, it seems indeed important that we face death before we are in any real, real danger of dying and reflect in our mortality before all our conscious and unconscious energy is directed to the struggle to survive. It's important to be prepared for death, very important, because if we start thinking about it only when we're terminally ill, then our reflections will not give us the support we need. And isn't that true? We just mm -hmm. kind of, well, I'll, I'll think about it later when I know I'm dying for sure, and I'll think about it. Mm -hmm. And when that happens, when somebody tells us we have cancer or whatever, all of our energy goes into surviving. We don't want to start thinking about dying now. So we all need to do this reflecting in our life and work through it as we age, as we journey with others. And I think it's just really important work for all of us. Probably the one central theme in Henry's writing and that's the kernel of the book. And it's the kernel, was the kernel of our opening prayer this morning. The understanding of identifying ourselves as God's beloved. That might be a whole new concept for some people. And to just think of yourself as someone who is God's beloved. God loves more than anything else. Henry says that the spiritual life requires a constant claiming of our true identity. And our true identity is that we are God's children, the beloved sons and daughters of our Heavenly Father. And Jesus' life itself reveals to us this mysterious truth. Because after Jesus was baptized in the Jordan by John, as we heard this morning, he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart, and the Spirit like a dove descending upon him, and the voice came out from heaven. You are my son, the beloved, my favor rests on you, or with whom I am well pleased, depending on the translation. And this is the decisive moment of Jesus' life, Henry says. His true identity is declared to him. He's the beloved of God. And as the beloved, he's being sent into the world so that all people will know through him and discover and claim their own belovedness. 
Just take a moment. Can you hear God saying that to you? You are my beloved. The way that Jesus heard it said in Jordan. Perhaps we cannot really befriend death until we can fully befriend life and being able to identify who we really are and why we're here. But we spend our lives trying to prove ourselves, don't we? We spend our lives trying to prove ourselves to others that, that we are somebody, that we're something, that we're worthy, that we're lovable. We keep forgetting who we really are, and we waste a lot of time and energy proving what we don't need to prove. We are God's chosen ones, the beloved sons and daughters of not because we've proven ourselves worthy of God's love, but because God chose us first. And when we go back to the reading from this morning, I, I chose that particular passage because it goes on into Jesus now being sent out into the desert. And certainly in the longer passage in Matthew where it talks about all the different temptations. But today, we... We know that as soon as Jesus was baptized, he is sent out to the desert for 40 days. So we have our season of Lent, don't we? And right away, Satan tempts Jesus to prove who he is. Prove who you are. Turn these stones into bread. But Jesus knew he didn't have to prove anything to Satan or to anyone else. Because he believed he was the beloved. Because he heard the voice of the beloved say that to him. You are my beloved. So he knew that he didn't have to prove himself to anyone. And Henry says, you were the beloved before you were born. You will be the beloved after you die. That's the truth of your identity. That's who you are, whether you feel bad or not bad, or whatever the world makes you think or feel or experience. You belong to God from eternity to eternity. And life is just an interruption of eternity and just a little opportunity for a few years to say, I love you too. 